All right, so I got a link here to download the desktop app for ChatGPT. So I grabbed that. It's a disk image here on a Mac. So I thought I'd take this for a quick test drive. All right, once that's installed, and I'll close out the web app. So I got options space. Oh, that's great. That's going to conflict with Alfred. That's all right. I can rebind that, I'm sure. Let's go into preferences here. Keyboard shortcut. Let's do, I don't think I have anything, control option space. We'll do that. All right, so now control option space or option space if you don't use Alfred. And what do we have here for settings? All right, blah, blah, blah. Shows your subscription. Archive chats. Why would I want to keep it on top? I don't know. Maybe some people want that. I hate programs that stay on top. Don't care about the doc. There's a voice. Okay. Whatever. Don't care. Okay. Nothing interesting there. So I'll just close that out. All right. So typical interface over on the left, like the browser here. Um, who is the 46th president? All right. So exactly what I'm used to with the web. Can I pick a model? Yep. I could do 4 0 here. So at this point, nothing that really stands out as far as an interface is concerned. However, I'm interested in the control option space, the launcher here, where you can ask a question. And sure, let's see, what can ChatGPT do? I'm assuming it understands that's the desktop app, right? No, it doesn't. Okay. What can desktop? I do like that it starts a new chat thread when I do that. I wonder if it keeps those open or if I need to open those somehow there's a sidebar here yeah okay so i'd use the sidebar to get back okay just like the web if i clear out the conversation with command k please tell me that works it doesn't work oh come on guys what do i have to do click here yeah add command k all right add open ai all right maybe they'll see that all right so let's do one more thing here Back over in the app, the little attach icon. Take a screenshot here of the browser. And let's ask it what this website is. So I can take a screenshot of a window, or I'm assuming the entire screen, feed that in and analyze it and then spit out some information. So yeah, all right, Twitter now rebranded as X. Shows a home feed with various tweets. Whose home feed is it? Okay, cool. It's even picked out the username and my full name. So presumably you might have some sort of Excel spreadsheet opened up and you want it to analyze that sheet, spit out some numbers. You could then do that, take a screenshot, I guess. Maybe you could even ask it instructions for how to do something. So that's an interesting feature. I think that has some promise. In fact, I think it has more promise if it could integrate with some sort of integration tool like Keyboard Maestro to actually call out actions and do things for you. And then there's also a voice mode, though I was having trouble with this earlier. Is this working? Can click to end. On for training, that's wonderful. Whatever. Guess it's trying to figure out if I'm swearing or whatever I'm saying right now. Yeah, it's still not working right now, so I'll have to do that one later. Even had some trouble here using just the transcription here. Who is the 45th president? Apparently, they're not running the Whisper model locally. They're using some sort of remote model, which is just timing out in this case, which is interesting. It's kind of disappointing because I know the Whisper model runs just fine locally. You'd think they would want to take advantage of local compute whenever possible. So that's going to time out as well. All right, so that's a wrap for now. I'll try to add some new features as I discover things later. Just wanted to show the initial process and what the app looks like. Not that groundbreaking. It pretty much is like getting rid of the browser and just having ChatGPT running in an app which is a lot like what Microsoft did with the Copilot app in Windows. There's nothing earth shattering that's added yet, at least as far as I've seen.